Welcome to the first in a series of videos detailing how to do the required practicals for the new GCSE Physics. The first required practical that we're going to look at today is specific heat capacity. The instructions for this are downloadable from my web shop on tes.com. The web address will be appearing on your screen. Feel free to download these, they're free of charge. You can use them to help you understand exactly what we're doing as we go through this practical. First thing that I'm going to do is explain to you what equipment we need for this practical. The first thing that we require is a heater. This is a 12 volt heater that plugs into our low voltage power supply, which is here. Our low voltage power supply provides the power that we need to provide the heat to our copper block. The copper block is wrapped in insulation and sits on a pad of insulation to prevent as much heat escaping as possible. We also require a voltmeter, an anneater, a stop clock, a thermometer, a pipette and a little bit of water. Step one of the instructions tells us to measure and record the mass of the copper block. This has already been done for us and the mass has been recorded on the front of the copper block. You need to make a note on your results table of the mass of the copper block. Step 2. Place a heater in the larger hole in the block. Connect the ammeter, power pack and heater in series. So we connect from the power supply to the heater from the heater to the ammeter and from the ammeter back to the power supply. We then have to connect the voltmeter across the heater so that goes in parallel, plugging into the back of each plug. We now have our equipment set up so that we can power it and take our readings of voltage and current. We use the pipette to put a small amount of water two or three drops is sufficient into a small hole in the block. This is to enable a better thermal contact between the thermometer and the block itself. We make sure that the power supply is set to 12 volts. We turn on the power supply Turn on our ammeter and voltmeter and record the readings of the voltage and the current at the top of our results table. The ammeter reading goes here, voltmeter reading goes here. We then measure the starting temperature of the block. To do this you need to get your eye level with the block and make sure you don't have any parallax error. Reading the temperature of the block, our starting temperature for this experiment is 20 degrees. We now start the stop clock. Every minute we take the temperature of the block and record it in our results table in the temperature column. After one minute the copper block is now at 23 degrees. Once the experiment is finished, you will have a completed results table that looks something like this. 
you need to repeat the experiment for different types of material. So we've repeated it for steel blocks and aluminium blocks. Here we have a set of results that I obtained earlier. We had an ammeter reading of 4.23 amps, a voltmeter reading of 11.13 volts, and our copper block had a mass of 1000 grams. You need to complete your results table so that you have all of those temperature readings. The next stage is to calculate the power of the heater. To do this we multiply the current 4.23 by the voltage 11.13 and the answer is recorded on that line there. The next stage is to calculate the work done in joules. To do this we multiply the power of the heater that you have just calculated by the time in seconds. So our first one will be zero multiplied by the power and as anything multiplied by zero is zero your first result in that box will be zero. You now need to calculate the rest of the work done by multiplying the answer on this line by each of these times in turn. You only need to record to one decimal place. These are the results for the steel, an ammeter reading of 3.95 amps, a voltmeter reading of 11.67 and a mass of 993.5 grams. These are the temperatures that you need to fill into your results table. The final set of results that you require are for aluminium. The ammeter reading was 3.88 amps, the voltmeter reading 11.49 volts and the mass of 1003 Point nine grams. These are the temperature readings that you need to record in your results table. Once we have calculated our work done, we then need to plot a graph of temperature in degrees C against work done in joules, as detailed in the notes that you have. Work done needs to go across the bottom temperature up the side. The bottom is known as the x-axis and that always takes the independent variable. The y-axis up the side always takes the dependent variable. You will need a sharp pencil and a ruler. These are the work done calculations for the copper block with a mass of a thousand grams an ammeter reading of 4.23 amps and a voltmeter reading of 11.13 volts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these on my graph. Work done in joules on the x-axis, temperature in degrees C on the y-axis. The first thing I have to do is I have to choose a suitable scale. We can see that my work done goes up to 28,248. So a suitable scale would go up to 30,000. That will allow me to go up in even steps probably of 5,000. The temperature goes from 20 to 66 so I would want to go up in tens to 70 degrees. So as you can see I've already done my y-axis from 0 to 70. I now need to label the x-axis and I'm going to use 10 small squares to equal 5,000 joules. At this point I now have a suitable scale. I need to label my axes and add the units. So on the x-axis I'll have work done in joules and on the y-axis temperature in degrees C. My graph is now ready for me to plot the points. The first point is easy. It's 0 and 20. 0 and 20. So I put a small x, making sure the center of the x is on the 20. 
my next value is 2824.2 and 21 degrees. If I look at my scale, every two squares is 500, so 2800 is just a little bit over 2750. So here's 2500, and there's 3000, there's 2750, and I want to go to 21, which is one square up. from the previous result. Now we can see I've plotted all of the results we now need to add a line of best fit. Now as with the instructions it tells you quite clearly that the gradient of the straight part of your graph will give you the heat capacity of the block but notice that the graph is not straight to start with there is a slow curve as the mass of the block gradually heats up. So we need to take that into consideration when we're plotting our line of best fit. So our line of best fit, we use our ruler and we add it to the graph so that we line along as many of the points as possible. We draw a single smooth straight line to the point at where it starts to curve and then we finish that off with a single smooth line with a curve and there we have our line of best fit. To calculate the gradient of the curve we need to choose some suitable points to work from. My line is very clearly straight at this point so I will draw down to the x-axis and we use as much of the graph as possible so that gives me my x values here we're at 5750 and here 25,000 26 27 27,000 500. The x value is 27,500 minus 5,750. This equals 21,750. So that is our x value. Our y values we track across to the y axis. We have a minimum value of 24 and a maximum value of 63. So our y value is 63 minus 24. This is 39. To calculate the gradient, we do the y value divided by the x value. Which in our case is 39 divided by 21,750, which gives us a value of 0.00. .00 one eight. That is the gradient of the graph. To calculate the heat capacity we do one over the gradient so on your calculator you can just press the reciprocal button which is x to the minus one or one over x or you can type it in again. We do one divided by 0.0018 which gives us a heat capacity of 555.5 recurring. 
To calculate the specific heat capacity for the block, we take the heat capacity and divide it by the mass of the block. So our heat capacity is 555.5 and our block was 1000 grams, which we need to convert to kilograms. To convert from grams to kilograms, we divide by 1000, which gives us a mass of 1 kilogram. 555.5 over 1 gives us a specific heat capacity of 555 joules per kilogram degrees C. So, having calculated our specific heat capacity from this graph, we can then do the same for both the steel and the aluminium blocks. I hope you've enjoyed this practical, I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to download the instruction sheet from my web shop and let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. Thank you very much.